we have one episode of two, the next one is, uh, but we are guests in this beautiful, beautiful land, and I want to acknowledge that. Thanks, sir. Nextly, I want to acknowledge that I don't know how to use my Mac after owning it for three years, <laughs> and this is how a PowerPoint presentation will look. I want to be expedient as I did. Uh, some of the presenters uh, need to get out early here, uh, and a few of us are going to see Chris Hedges after as well. So uh, I want to acknowledge that uh, Loco and uh, Cafe, Loco BC, Potluck Cafe and Catering, who operates the Recipes for Success uh, program or service. Uh, the Carnegie Community Action Project and representatives from the city of Vancouver are all here today. And without these partners, this uh, initiative would not have come together. And so I'm very thankful that uh, all of their input has, has gone into this. And I'm excited to share this with you. So, uh, what is Community Wise? The Hastings Crossing BIA applied to the city for funding. Uh, last year to create a, what, what was uh, termed a social inclusion strategy for the BIA uh, and um, develop some context around the downtown side, how it's changed, the pressures that uh, the community is feeling right now, so that businesses can understand ways that they can be more socially inclusive, they can learn ways to use their purchasing power in a way that can have a real impact in the community and connect with residents, organizations, and other businesses in such a way that we can really try and continue to build a more inclusive local economy where there are opportunities, broadly speaking, for all the residents in this community. And really, uh, really honor the fact that this is uh, a majority low-income community, and we need to work hard as a business community to ensure that, uh, that we're able to include our our lower income friends and neighbors in the opportunities that we create and, and in the spaces that we uh, manage to operate. Right. Um, and so just I think I want our partners to compile all this content into a program that at the end of the day is also really about um, building social capital, getting people together, um, discussing what's going on, enjoying food and, and beverages, uh, and, and learning about all these things together. And we have a lot to learn from, from residents and from service providers in the area, and, and likewise, I think we have a lot to share as businesses too. So, My final slide here, there's a, there's a sort of novel, I think there's a novelness to this, I was asked to speak about it recently uh, at a conference in, in New York because we're not the only community that's um, facing these kind of challenges or these sort of opportunities as well, and I might as well say. Um, there are communities all over North America as there's been a return to uh, urban lifestyle and we've seen development return to areas uh, that these um, tensions and, and, and pressures but also these opportunities uh, exist. And so a lot of people are curious and looking elsewhere in the world, including Vancouver, uh, at different ways of taking direct action in communities, different ways of investing in communities, different ways of developing in communities, and, and this sort of program uh, fits into that spectrum of what people are trying to do in different cities so that we can grow and develop in a healthy and inclusive way. So, please register, uh, particularly if you're a business here. Um, there's a registration desk at the front. I know some of you registered already on the way in. And I wanted to, without further ado, uh, we're going to share little snippets of the, the three different uh, workshop areas of interest. And so I want to invite Gene Swanson from CAP to come up here and share a whole series. Right. My name is Phoenix Winter. I'm president of the board at the Carnegie Community Center Association, and we have 5,000 members of, com of the community that we represent. And uh, I met Wes over at the local area plan, which was, well, there's some city staff here in the room, so be careful what I say. But <laughs> I, uh, I come to this community because I've been homeless and have a mental illness, and a lot of times 
because I didn't have a home, I'd be out on the streets or in businesses interacting. And I just wanted to share an experience when I was in Calgary. I would go to the Starbucks every morning, get a hot water for free, put in some free honey, and use the bathroom. And I did this for like a couple of months. And then one time I actually had money to buy breakfast, but it was in the display case, and they said they couldn't sell it. And I said, well, I actually have money to pay for breakfast today. And they ended up calling the cops on me. But uh, it's um, what I've heard. I'm not a pro Starbucks person. I wouldn't even go into the chain beforehand. But one of the homeless people in Toronto said, go in there and they'll give you a frappuccino for free. Just say you don't have any money. And so I did. And they did give me a frappuccino and let me sit on the patio outside and didn't disturb me. So I remember those things. And they apparently Starbucks has a policy that sometime down the line, some homeless person is going to have money and they're going to be able to spend money there. So, I'm, anyway, that's, I should have said a coffee shop and then <laughs> But uh, the other thing I, I wanted to mention was about the community and a Native man was away from this community for five years and when he came back to it and saw the changes in it and you know, the fewer places for low-income people to spend time and be around, they said it, it made them cry, the differences. And people that are just away for two years notice the differences. Like the Pantages, um, sequel 138 coming in across from Insight, there's lots of issues in the community and that's part of our discussion is on social like, exclusion, displacement, and gentrification and just talking, I mean, especially with the man who got um, dumps with water outside the Tim Hortons that is an important issue and so those are some of the things that we'll be discussing and we have homework for people too if you want to sign up on March 6th for our workshop but it's to read two articles one saying that the downtown east side is a bottomless hole uh, that takes tons and tons of money and the other saying that social mix is not necessarily a solution that uh, um, low income people have their own community and look after each other and somehow we need to honor that so Thank you, Wes. Uh, I'm really excited about this event. I'm, I'm super excited uh, to see all the, the cross-section of people here that are, that are willing to participate in a conversation in Vancouver about uh, you know, community change is different than every other city in North America. And uh, we can dare to be different. And I uh, uh, thank Wes for organizing this. Um, Mission Possible has been around for about 25 years in the downtown east side. Um, uh, for the last six years, we've been working diligently and I think creatively and figuring out ways to employ people with barriers in our community. And uh, to offer th to them what they want is an opportunity. And uh, uh, people will train uh, uh, dependency in for opportunity any day, day of the week. Um, uh, people in our community, um, you know, some of the dr people drive through and they think they're lazy, they don't want to work. It's the farthest thing from the truth. Uh, so we've, uh, we've started a, a maintenance company that does uh, exterior property cleaning in this community and does over $400,000 of business every year. You can hire them. Uh, we have uh, the other recycling center that uh, recycles chimneys, bar soaps, and bottled amenities from the hospitality industry. And, and repurpose them for community throughout the world. And then we have a security business, which is empty neighbors. And you know, several years ago, we uh, we were we were uh, challenged by um, some of the relationships between security personnel and the community and our community, and some of the, the some of the uh, the abuses that were happening. And there was a court case in the downtown BIA, um, and we uh, actually approached another BIA and said, Hey, listen, we can do this better. Because people in our community have uh, capacities and talents and yes, they have experiences that are going to enable them to do this job better than the people that are doing it right now. And so we did that. We started a, a, a community uh, watch service. Uh, uh, started with uh, um, Strathcona BIA and now we're working with uh, East Crossing. Uh, employing local residents, uh, providing uh, business, business contacts, uh, check-ins, uh, picking up needles, uh, uh, reporting on graffiti and, and different uh, safety hazards in the community, uh, uh, de-escalating uh, situations, um, and it's been amazing. And uh, over over 95 percent of um, the community members that have gone in and received the the, the BC security training 
have worked with us for six months, over 95% of them have moved on into other employment. It's been incredibly successful, uh, and we're excited uh, and, and thankful for the, the Hastings Crossing BIA to give us that chance. If I could just uh, tell you one story that maybe maybe it'll change your, your thoughts on our community, maybe it won't, but um, uh, uh, we have a, a lady that we employed a number of years ago, um, I got to call her Lisa. Um, uh, Lisa started working for us uh, in our recycling center. Um, uh, she's had a really tough, uh, a traumatic life experiences, um, uh, has, has survived the sex trade in the downtown east side, survived uh, addictions, uh, uh, it has a, a recovery journey of her own, um, and started working for us um, about four years ago. And it was the first job she'd ever had in her life where she got paid with a paycheck, an actual check. And I'll never forget the day when she, uh, when we, we handed her the check and she kind of had tears in her eyes. I'm always uh, one to ask what you're going to do with that paycheck because I'm never sure what's going to happen, especially early on, what was going to happen when I give somebody a paycheck for the first time. And this was a huge paycheck. It was like $150. It was the first paycheck that she'd ever had. And, uh, and I said, I said, Lisa, what are you going to do with that check? And she looked at me with tears in her eyes and she said, you know, I sponsored one child in Africa. Now I think I can sponsor two. This is my co-director. And basically, LOCO, our vision for the world is to create healthy, inclusive, uh, resilient communities underpinned by sustainable local economies. And when we say sustainable, we don't, like many people do when they say sustainable, we and so, although we love green outcomes, we're all about that, uh, we really feel like there's not enough focus on the social and economic side of sustainability. And so that's why I founded Local five years ago. And we're basically a networking, well, we're a business network, kind of 250 businesses in and around the Lower Mainland, a few on Vancouver Island and various places. See you, Sky. And then we also are an education and advocacy group and we do research and uh, are really trying to build a movement to get this message out and, uh, and to get consumers, businesses, and institutions and governments to shift their spending towards local businesses and uh, social enterprises to drive better social and economic outcomes. So there you go. Those are vision for the world. For some reason, it looks like a presentation there, but not there. I think Wes maybe like flipped the... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, don't matter. Uh, so on the 26th, this is the third session, um, we're basically going to let you know what are the outcomes that I'm talking about. And uh, I'm using this term, uh, impact purchasing, which I hope it will mean to you that we're talking both about the social and about the economic outcomes. And then we're going to help you look at where are you at in terms of your current purchasing practices. And we're going to help you identify and share suppliers. A lot of what Loco tries to do is we don't know it all by any means, but there's so many resources in both our network and in businesses. And if, if we can sort of help them release the information and value they have to each other. So we're going to help you identify you know, what are you doing well already. And if you know some great suppliers, then can you share those great suppliers with other people? And then we have a new tool that we're using. We're calling it the local impact assessment. We've done it with, <coughs> excuse me, we've done it with about a dozen of our members, and uh, we're going to be doing it with some local clothing manufacturers leading up to Vancouver Fashion Week. And, uh, and we're really just testing out how do you compare one local business to another and help them identify what they're doing well, what they could be doing better, and, uh, and you know, ultimately help all of us consumers, businesses, and others identify who are the best businesses that we want to spend our money with. We all have to spend money, and so we want to get the best outcomes that we can get. Um, so we're going to run you through that process. Typically, that takes about a half an hour on the phone or in person. We're going to try and try it quick fire in our in our workshop, and then we're going to help you. Uh, part of that whole process is a storytelling exercise as well to help you market yourself as a better business. People are looking for better businesses. It might sound like self-interest to you, but people want to know the good things that you're doing so that they can create uh, good value with their money too. 
and then we're going to highlight a few case studies of uh, impact purchasing and also other practices. So uh, Derek from from 1010 Tapas is here. He's doing some interesting things in his restaurant in terms of opening up space and being a more inclusive uh, restaurant. So we're going to try to have a few people in the audience and um, and even hosting it at Half Cafe, which is nearby here, that's doing employment uh, employment training for people in the food service industry. So you know, I'm trying to give you some real world examples of what's possible. So quickly. <coughs> So the economic outcomes of purchasing, in case you don't know, um, are created by the ripple effect when you buy from a locally owned business or buy locally grown or locally made products. That business supports other businesses in the community, particularly service providers. Sometimes you know, their local businesses are not always buying local supplies, local food, local whatever. Um, but they are most often buying marketing services, accounting, local banks, all of that kind of thing. And so a big part of it is in um, um, local so the impact employment and uh, how to be an inclusive employer. So I'm going to hand it over to Tara, who's going to share with you a little bit about recipes for success, uh, which designed the, uh, the third of these three workshops. <laughs> supports employers to be supportive employers, uh, providing practical guidance for businesses of all time that are currently or are looking to employ people facing barriers to employment. Um, the goal of recipes is to improve employment outcomes by increasing the number of people with barriers to employment to successfully keep their jobs. And that's the big thing. It's not just about getting people a job, and that's where recipes come into play. It's helping people keep those jobs, helping employers to help those employers keep better those jobs. Currently, Recipes is supporting 23 local businesses, which in turn supports nearly 100 employees facing barriers. Um, some of the services include recruitment and hiring, mentorship and training, and direct one-on-one -on -one support. A bit about the workshop. Uh, the 90-minute workshop held March 12th here at Austin Found will be a paperless presentation on increasing your community impact and business success. Attendees will follow along on their tablets and smartphones. Um, making all materials, toolkits, and resources covered available online for future use. I'll also have some hard copies available for those who prefer to follow along on paper. Um, we will cover essential key app co concepts and real world best practices, resources, tools on how you can effectively participate in social impact employment. At the end of the evening on March 12th, you'll we'll have the answers to the questions like what does social impact employment mean to me and how can I participate? You'll know more about the who's, why's, and how's, but most importantly, you'll learn about social impact employment as an investment in your business and community, what are the costs involved, and what are your returns on investment. 